Good day, hi, and welcome. Okay, the last video this today, because I gotta get stuff done. Oh, please. It's procrastinating, procrastinating, procrastinating. Eh, oh well. All right. Uh, as a motorcyclist, first check out my hat. Um, we 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 tend to uh, bash car drivers, not realizing they some of them. Yes, they they have bad riding habits, and uh, there's no shortage of footage of road rage, uh, motorcycle versus car stuff out there. And there's a lot of people who just don't know how to freaking drive. You know, they just don't know how to drive. Uh, there's no shortage of that. And mo a motorcyclist always has to take that into account. But one thing we don't do is extend that olive branch enough to car drivers to educate them on what is really going on. And on this one, um, motorcyclists educating car drivers, maybe I'll start a series there, I don't know what I'll call it, but uh, is something that I, I was writing, uh, I think it was two days ago, and I had uh, you know a pickup truck behind me, and it's very common with pickup drivers. Uh, guys in pickup trucks, people in pickup trucks, they tailgate and tailgate and tailgate. I don't know why this is. They feel like they have to do 120 everywhere they go. They do have engines that are pretty big and powerful and very easily do those speeds. Maybe that's all it is, just the, the way they're geared. But it seems like everybody in a pickup truck is always in a hurry. Uh, but not just pickup trucks. But the thing is, pickup trucks, they don't take corners well. So they tend to cross the line all the time. Uh, I notice this. That's why I never ride too close to the to the center line. It's just when you're coming around a blind corner, because that pickup truck guy is going to be in the center of the road. You know it if he comes around at the same time as you. Um, the other thing is they're always riding with two tires in the ditch. Uh, tractor trailers, they're, they're big and they you know they got a they got a different you know they they got a little bit of an excuse because of their you know they're, they're a lot wider and stuff like that, and not all roads are quite adequate for them. So yeah, you expect those guys and you keep your distance accordingly every time they hit the shoulder of the road a bit and kick up a bit of dust and what have you. And sometimes they come across the line because, you know, they're just, they're just big, you know, they're just big. Okay. But pick up trucks and cars, um, you know, normal size vehicles. When they're behind you and they're following you like 30 feet behind, which is very calm. I don't understand why people do this. Why they, you know, everybody, when they get on a highway, they think they have to be 30 feet behind everybody. I, I don't know what they're thinking. They don't never take into account, whether it's two wheels or four ahead of them, what's that guy's braking distance? You know, uh, they never take that into account for some funny reason. Uh, so what I figured I'd tell you, explain to car drivers here, or even other bikers. Uh, I had a friend that was really bad for following people too close on his bike and then always complaining how everybody's cutting him off. I'm like, yeah, but you know they're going to do that. You know they're got, people are going to turn it on decisive and you know account for it. Ride like you're invisible. If a safety margin, a good safety margin is three seconds, take it to six. You know, if uh, there's a lot of traffic behind you, do the speed limit. All the all the lead foots will go around you. Then you got nobody behind you to worry about. I'm usually more because you can't control the guy ahead of you. You can't control the guy behind you a little bit. So you, as a motorcyclist. Don't account for their ignorance. of not, And the ignorance is simply this. Many people that drive in cars, okay, don't understand how fast even the heaviest of motorcycles will stop. Meaning, if I jammed on both of my brakes, okay, from 60 miles an hour, uh, I can have that back tire in the air and still be, uh, you know, from 60 to 0 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers to 0, in probably under 100 feet. The average car is probably going to take 120 to 160 feet to stop depending on the weight load depending on and that's from when they hit the pedal okay that's from when they hit the pedal okay so you have to take that into consideration so slowing these people people down that are tailgating you there's no point getting mad at them because they don't they really even if they know they're not conscious about it uh what I do, I never brake check people because people think you're just being dirty to them. And then they, they try to, you know, the road rage kicks in and they try to tailgate even closer, which just makes everything, uh, or they try to force you to speed up. Uh, first, uh, if you got somebody that's tailgating you and you have the room to do it, start taking yourself down to the speed limit, you know, even a tad five clicks or 10 clicks or five miles an hour below the speed limit, slowly. So that you start to peel off their speed. They're going to get a little bit close. But then as soon as there's an opportunity for them to pass, they'll pass you. 
Let them pass you, give them the room, move over. Because, you know, people tend to pass in the center of the road. Not, they don't tend to go out and come all the way in like they should. Uh, don't take it personally. That's what they're going to do, right? Um, so let those people, let the lead foots get around you. Now, if you can't do that and you're coming to a stop, well before the stop, and it takes a little bit of coordination to do this. Step one, don't hit the brake. Start reducing your speed. As you're reducing your speed, check your mirror. Put your hand out like you're stopping. Because that doesn't offend anybody. It, it never makes it like people look, what is he doing? But you caught their attention at worst. Now they're looking at you. Now you can start applying the brake if you want or downshift. Whatever you got to do, you probably got to downshift and start applying the brake. But get, your, get their attention with your arm. That will back them off a bit on the speed because uh, they, they know you're doing something. They just don't understand what you're doing. And then if you're going to sig- if you're going to go left, you're going to go right, whatever, it's a good idea to hit your signal and then throw out your arm. Uh, okay, if you're going to do that. Why? Because if they're that close, they're looking at the back of your head, they're not looking at your signals anyway. You know. But when you put your arm out, it tends to, oh, what, what, you know, they're like, what's this guy doing? Oh, because I know a lot of times, like if I signal right like this, people wave at me because they, they don't know what you're doing. But then if they see enough motorcyclists do this, and you can do this on any bike. I mean, I've had bike motorcycles with no signals and I, you know, I got used to doing it and I still do it. And when you do arm signals with regular signals, you get cut off a lot less. But the thing is, is you have to maintain uh, or have to control the speed uh, so that you can slow them down before, without doing the brake check. If you start doing dirty stuff like that, it just incites road rage. Uh, and the thing is, is some bikes, uh, you could put like, uh, I had one, uh, two bikes that you could put the pedal almost half down on the back brake and the taillight would come on right away. And you wouldn't even be touching the brake, so you'd, you'd flash the light. They would see it, um, and then. Uh, but again, people get offended when you brake check them. They shouldn't. You're, you're telling the person behind you that you're a little too close. But for some people, they take it personal. I don't, I don't know why that is. It just is what it is. Uh, rather than say, "Oh, okay, well maybe I'm just too close," and you know, but I got to get there right now. You know, you got all those people that are hopped up on Red Bulls and coffees, and they got to get there right now. You know, um, no. Uh, but the arm is a good good idea. Try that. Uh, the other one is safety margins. Again, you can't control the guy behind you 100%, but you can you know, control the space in between you and the guy next to you. The problem you get is you got the guy in the pickup truck, usually, uh, too close. Now, when they get too close, the guy ahead of you is always going too slow because this guy's speeding. And if you speed and he's speeding, now you have that much more speed to have to bleed off you're going to need more distance, more time, so that you don't run into the guy ahead of you or he gets squished in between the two of them. You know what I mean? So if somebody's tailgating you, go down to the speed limit at least. Maybe a little bit less. They will get closer to you. Do it slowly. Put out your arm just to let you know that you're slowing down a bit. Uh, And then once you've done it once or twice, they'll understand what that signal means. And usually they'll go around. But the next biker that does it, they're going to keep their distance. Why? Because, oh, this guy's slowing. You know, and, and I know it's a sign for stopping, but it's doing it the least offensive way, and it's educating drivers behind you what you're doing. Because if you just let off on the throttle, uh, my bike, if I let off on the throttle, there's enough compression, and I could break the... I, I, nine times out of ten, I don't have to use my brakes to stop. You know, if I gear down... The, the compression from the bike, you know, it, it slows me down. It's, it's 12 and a half to 1 compression. So that bike, if you're, you got the revs high, it, it'll pull you down to whatever speed that, that's geared for. Uh, you know, the, it is a chain drive bike, so it will coast a bit for sure. But it doesn't take much to pull the speed off of this bike. That's the problem. Uh, if I have to stop fast, the guy's hitting me behind me because he cannot stop. He cannot stop at the speed I stop. And you have to take, it's going to take three seconds. Before things happen. So, number one, you recognize the threat. Number two, you start taking action. Number three, you're taking action. Okay? Breaking. So, that's probably three seconds right there. So, if the guy behind you is tailgating you, give the guy ahead of you four to six seconds. Account for him. Uh, But what I would like to educate drivers on, and this is why they say when you drive a motorcycle, you become a better car driver, because you start to learn these things that, yes, motorcycles can stop on a dime. And a lot of bikers don't realize that, that the people behind you can't stop on a dime. You hear truckers, like uh, 18-wheeler truckers, uh, lorry, what they call lorry drivers over in the UK, um, uh, 
complain about this all the time. You got these idiots pulling in front of me. They don't know I can't stop on a dime. And you know what? That's probably true. That's probably true. You got somebody in a compact car that can stop on a dime. They tend to brake check everybody, not because they're doing it on purpose. It's because the car just stops so fast. So they wait to the very last second to stop where something bigger or heavier tends to brake a little bit earlier. So if you drive or ride and brake way earlier than you need to, you're giving, you're, you're pacing yourself with the vehicle behind you that will need that am same amount of time to stop. And every vehicle successively behind him or successively behind him. You know what I mean. So just something that I thought that would be a good thing, a good video to share around to your friends that might not realize that motorcycles stop on a dime. And some bikers might not realize that the cars behind you do not realize you could stop on a dime. Um, so they take a great offense. They think you're brake checking them. But what it is is that because, again, maybe they're tired, it's bad driving habits, uh, you know, most people always follow too close whether they're in a car or whatever. Um, and if you want to get the proper distances, here's the trick. And it works like a charm. If you want to realize how much everybody speeds, do the speed limit. Everybody's flying around you. But what you'll also find when you do the speed limit, you're never crowded in. Very rarely. Very rarely. Maybe in the, in the stop go traffic in the city. But very rarely. Um, so take into account that the guy behind you can't stop, but stop to his pace. So you know he's going to need, if it's a pickup truck uh, pulling a trailer, he's going to need 200 feet. Maybe you don't have 200 feet, so you know maybe move yourself in the lane position and keep your eye on the mirror so that if this guy's going to go into the other guy, you know, you know it's bad that you're going to let him go into the other guy. But if you could try to slow him down before they get you brake check them, because uh, when they see your arm, and, and I mean we're talking within seconds, this all happens within a few seconds. So you're coming along, okay? I'm coming to a stop, okay? I've geared down one, geared down two, okay? The guy's 30 feet behind me, hand comes out. Okay, I'm letting off the throttle. Okay, he's slowing down. He's backing off. He's backing off. Brakes coming in. Clutches in. Downshifting. Let out the clutch. You know, do a whatever. Or I just hold in the clutch and just coast. Whichever. And I, I do it. You know, what? And just just let the brake. You know, do its thing very slowly, and then start a back brake first. Front brake. And I never touch my front brake first. Uh, always back brake, uh, front brake, because, uh, you know, I got enough power to stop a racing car with the, this bike, right? And you probably do, too, even with one disc. That's a lot of stopping power, even on a heavy bike. So you just come to a nice, slow, barely touching the brakes kind of stop. Nice and calm. Guy behind you is not ticked off at you. If you're going to signal, you can signal left, signal right, whatever. And you can do this while you're slowing down. You can do, you know, hit your signal light and put your arm out. And it trains the drivers behind you. And the oncoming drivers that when they see that bikers do this more because it's a bit of a lost art of hand signals on bikes are a bit of a lost art. Most people know what it means, but or a lot of people know what it means, but a lot of people don't. So just take that into consideration. Uh, orange car, I don't know who that is. Anyway, uh, I gotta get my ass in gear. It's one o'clock now. I can't believe I've been making videos all day. Uh, all right, so, but at least I got a lot of stuff for the, <laughs> for the week anyway, uh, for the, this channel. So anyway, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, put your comments down below what you think about the idea. And if you got better tips than me, by all means, education uh, benefits all. Throw it down below. Next to that, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourselves, be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. I'm still a great day. Eh?